In this video, I'm gonna explain how to make gains at every level of training experience. Now, in this other video over here, I explained the theory of muscle growth in five levels. So in this video, I wanna focus on the practical side of things. What do you need to do in the gym as a beginner, intermediate, and advanced level lifter to keep driving progress forward? Wait a minute, what the? What the? Where am I? Do or changing the amount of se Whoa, are you Jeff Nippard? How did you get here? Well, I was uh, just filming this video and- Hey, since you're here, how about we work on a video together? My channel, Picture Fit, just passed a million subscribers, so maybe you actually <laughs> collab with me now? Well, I mean, uh, since I'm here and everything, um, what if I need to get back? Uh, it depends. But here, you can use this. I haven't used it in seven years. All right, thanks. Um, so the video is about making gains at every training level. You want to kick things off with a quick overview of nutrition first? Sure thing, my Kiwi-loving friend. So regardless of your training level, the fundamental nutritional factors will be much the same, with the most important factor being total daily caloric intake. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. So if you're trying to maximize your muscle gains, you'll ideally wanna be in a caloric surplus, generally eating something around 10 to 20% above the calories you'd need to maintain your weight will drive muscle gain without excessive fat gain. Now, if you're really trying to limit fat gain as much as possible, putting your calories at around maintenance while optimizing your training will often result in body recomposition where you build muscle while losing fat simultaneously. However, this does tend to work best for people in the beginner to early intermediate category and does get harder the more advanced you get. And then if your primary goal is to lose fat, you will need to be in a caloric deficit this time, around 10 to 20% below maintenance is best. And again, while muscle gain is possible in a deficit, it does become less feasible the more advanced you get. Great, and the other major factor is daily protein intake. The best evidence here suggests that being in the range of 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilo of body weight per day. And those are pretty much the basics for nutrition. Training, however, is a bit more complicated. As you get more years under your belt, the way you structure your training will need to be modified in order to keep driving progress. So Jeff, how about you kick things off with the beginner level? Sure. So in your first year or two of lifting, assuming you do most things right and without steroids, most people should be able to put on something around 10 to 25 pounds or 4.5 to 11 kilos of muscle as a male and 6 to 15 pounds or 3 to 7 kilos as a female. These ranges are pretty wide because there's a lot of genetic variation between individuals. However, to ensure that you're maximizing on your so-called newbie gains, as a beginner, you'll want to focus on three main things. The first is technique. It's very important to learn proper technique on a variety of different machines and free weight exercises so you can properly apply tension to the target muscles. This means using an appropriate range of motion so the target muscle goes through a reasonably full stretch and reasonably full contraction, controlling the negative and properly breathing and bracing on exercises that require it. Now, generally, I recommend inhaling on the negative and exhaling on the positive, but as you get some experience, you should consider bracing with the so-called Valsalva maneuver on heavier compound exercises like squats, where you breathe in before each rep and hold your breath throughout the negative and positive, releasing the breath at the top. Second, as a beginner, it's important to focus on linear strength progression as the main method of progressive overload. This means picking a handful of so-called primary exercises and simply aiming to add some amount of weight to them each and every week at the same rep count, generally in the range of around 6 to 12 reps. For example, on the bench press, you could start with the empty bar and add just 5 pounds every week for 6 reps. Just doing this alone, most people should be able to bench their body weight for a 1 rep max before the end of their first year of training. Thirdly, as a beginner, you want to start thinking about your proximity to failure, and once you've got the technique sufficiently understood, start learning what failure on various exercises actually feels like. This is important to set you up for success in the later stages, because even though you don't need to go to failure to make progress, if you don't know what it means to push yourself, you won't know how to judge your own effort at all. And then you risk training at too low of an intensity, especially as you move into the intermediate level. Okay, so sometime in between the one to five year mark of your training, you should find yourself in the ever common intermediate stage of training experience. Again, assuming you do most things right with your training and nutrition, you should be able to put on something around another 10 to 20 pounds of muscle as a male and six to 12 pounds as a female throughout your intermediate years combined. 
And to make sure you're maximizing on this potential, you'll want to make sure you're focusing on three main things. The first thing is still progressive overload. However, it won't be quite as simple as when you were a beginner. You'll quickly learn that after a year or two, maybe even sooner, you can't simply add weight to the bar or the machine each and every workout anymore without compromising technique. Now, you should still aim to add weight over time, it just won't be as linear or as frequent. Because of this, you can start implementing rep overload. This is when you use a rep range rather than a fixed rep target and add one rep each week rather than increasing the weight. For example, let's say you're doing easy bar bicep curls in the six to eight rep range. You'll keep the weight fixed at 60 pounds and do that for six reps in week one. In week two, you'll do the same weight, but for seven reps. In week three, you'll do it for eight reps. Once you reach that top end of the range, you can go back to six reps, but this time add a little bit of weight. Now, if after several weeks, you're still not able to increase the weight or the reps without form breakdown, you do have the final option of adding an extra set. So let's say you were doing three sets of six to eight reps before, now you'll do four sets of six to eight reps. Granted, because increasing the number of sets you do will increase the volume very suddenly, I do recommend saving this form of overload as a sort of last straw, since it will take a bigger toll on recovery than adding weight or reps. In any case, the name of the game at this stage is to find the volume sweet spot for you, not just increase volume to infinity. Usually 10 to 20 sets per body part per week is optimal. So if you start to get well above this range, it might be time to stop increasing the number of sets and do an exercise swap. And on that note, the second thing you should focus on as an intermediate is periodically rotating exercises. The reason I say periodically rotating is that if you just constantly haphazardly switch exercises in and out, you actually make it harder to make progress on those exercises. Instead, it's a lot smarter to stick with any single exercise for one to two months and increase the weights, reps, and maybe sets on that exercise and then switch it out for a different exercise. I mainly do this for isolation exercises. For example, for the side delts, you can start with a standing dumbbell lateral raise and progress on that for a month or two, then swap for a lean away Egyptian cable lateral raise for a month or two, then do a chest supported inclined lateral raise, and then do a machine lateral raise. And thirdly, as an intermediate, it's very important to start fine tuning your proximity to failure. In your first year or two of training, you should have learned what true failure feels like. And now in your intermediate years, it's important to get very good at judging what one, two, or three reps in the tank feels like. This is because for recovery purposes, it isn't always best to take every set all the way to failure, but you do need to be sufficiently close. And as a general rule, you wanna be one to three reps shy of failure on most compound movements like squats, presses, etc., and zero to two reps shy of failure on most isolation exercises. And I'd suggest taking the last set of isolation exercises all the way to failure, just as a steady reminder of what it really feels like to actually go there. Okay, so after four to five years of serious dedicated training, most people should find themselves at the advanced level. At this point, assuming things have already been reasonably optimized for four to five years, you should be able to put on something around one to two pounds of muscle per year as a male and 0.5 to one pounds per year as a female. Although at a certain point, you may need to get more aggressive with your caloric surplus in order to build any more new muscle naturally. Still, to make sure you're maximizing on your potential as an advanced lifter, you'll want to focus on three advanced strategies. Jeff? All right, so first you should consider doing so-called specialization phases. This is when you dedicate one to two months of training to developing just one or two body parts by blasting them with more volume than usual. Depending on just how much volume you hit them with, you may need to put the volume for some of your other muscles at maintenance to make sure you're still recovering globally. So for example, let's say you really wanna bring up your chest. Assuming you've already done all the other stuff we've talked about, I'd suggest taking your current chest volume and bumping it up by about 20 to 40%. So let's say you were doing 12 hard sets per week for your chest before, now you'll do 15 to 17 sets for your chest per week for your specialization phase. Now, if you find recovery to be an issue, you might wanna slash some of your delt or tricep isolation work to promote overall recovery. Second, as an advanced trainee, it might be a good idea to experiment with some advanced intensity techniques, especially on stubborn body parts. Here we're talking about stuff like drop sets, myo reps, and eccentric accentuated reps. Drop sets are where you extend a set beyond failure by dropping the weight back and doing even more reps. Myo reps are when you extend a set beyond failure by doing short mini rests for three or four seconds after reaching failure, which allow you to crank out a few more so-called effective reps with the same weight. And eccentric accentuated 
accentuated reps are when you find a way to overload the negative more than the positive by, for example, slowing down the negative or having someone apply extra resistance to the eccentric. And I think these techniques can all be worth periodically including on the last set of isolation exercises, especially on machine exercises for stubborn muscles. Just be careful not to overdo them as they do have a greater recovery cost than a standard set. And third, I think that as an advanced trainee, it's smart to experiment with different training frequencies. The general consensus from the scientific community is that while hitting each muscle twice per week is usually enough on average to maximize growth, it is still clear from the literature that the optimal frequency varies from person to person. For this reason, if you've been training each body part just once a week for a long time, I definitely try hitting each body part twice a week. And if you've been at twice a week for a long time, consider something higher frequency, such as a high frequency full body split. Now, from my experience, not everyone will respond better to higher frequencies per se, but at worst, it is equal to more moderate frequencies. And for some people, higher frequency training really does seem to work quite a lot better. So in the advanced stage, it's definitely a factor worth playing around with. And that's it for this one. That was amazing! We should totally do it again! Uh, yeah, it sounds good to me. Um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see. Heck, why not just do it now? We'll hang out your place this time. Uh, sure. Why not? Wait, that's a wrong button!